This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we get back to repeater troubleshooting. Looks like our tower climber is going to have to make another climb up. And we're going to replace the antenna and the cabling to see if that is where our problem lies. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Alrighty, so it's time to get back to troubleshooting our repeater. We've been having problems with the receive on the repeater. Transmit seems to be getting out just fine, but uh, coming directly into the repeater was not working well. So uh, AC4DM had some hard line laying around <laughs> from uh, his hardware, uh, what we call Don's hardware. Plus this, uh, we've got a number of GP3 antennas uh, in our inventory that we use for the gravel rally, and we thought, well, Let's replace the cabling. We had a storm that went through about three months ago, and it tore up towers in all over Kentucky and Tennessee, and we thought we might have water damage or the antenna was damaged, something. So we thought, well, let's use some of this hard line that we've got lying around, uh, and let's also replace the antenna on top just in case. So we're basically, the SWR checked and everything, but let's go ahead and replace it anyway since we've got some of the uh, material. So here we can see KD6FTR and our fearless leader here rolling out the hard line to get it ready for going up the tower. <laughs> now for those of you that have been following along the channel, you know that... Uh, we have what are called regular, regularly scheduled work days. Now, these are days where the club gets together and many of our members come out, and it helps us do required maintenance. Now, sometimes all we have to do is check the batteries and mow a little bit uh, in the spring and summer months. Other times, it will be something like this when we have a major problem with the main repeater. We've been getting by with the remote sites. Uh, we have five remote sites, I believe, in operation that feed back to the main repeater on a 220 link and this allows us to extend the reach of our main repeater and it also allows people to use HTs when they're further out as well. Those have been working great. Our Echolink, our all-star connectivity, everything on that end has been working great. But if you came directly into the repeater with a tone of 77 hertz, no bueno. So we're going to go ahead and replace the cabling and we're going to replace the antenna on top. As I mentioned, we have a GP1 up there. Maybe it was damaged. We weren't sure. We hadn't been up at the top to even see. And we thought while we're here, let's go ahead and put a GP3 up there. It'll be a little bit better uh, as antennas go. Not that we really need it because we're in a great location. Now, we had uh, a lot of people come out for this workday. I think we had 11 people yeah, out uh, for this workday, which makes things so much easier. Uh, ben Olo, KK4JPX, is mowing. He's I'm off in the distance right there, but or will be. Uh, but uh, we mow, we, uh, we weed, we spray weeds, and in this case, we're climbing towers, creating cables, and seeing if it makes a difference. All righty, we got KI4RWO here again. He's got his gear on, all the stuff that he normally wears when he's up on a tower. Ken, what are we trying to accomplish today? We are putting up a new antenna on the very top. We think we have a problem with that antenna. A new uh, hard line. Hard, hard line. Hard, hard so we've been line. using probably what, LMR400 or some equivalent? Uh, either that or another strand of hard line that's right. either gone bad, got water in it, or you know something. We had a big storm come through, what, about two or three months ago, and it just really hasn't been the same since. Yeah, so I, I say either something's got kinked on it or got water in it. Okay, and so we're essentially replacing the antenna and cabling everything uh -huh. coming into the repeater. Yep, so okay. i got to climb that 100-foot tower, uh, take that pipe down, uh, lower it down to, uh -huh. get to the top antenna, right. replace it, and then hook up everything and then secure the wire on my way down. All right, and do it safely. So, you got uh, got your hard hat on, got your gear on, and uh, uh, when you're taking hard line up a tower, do you actually attach the hard line to you? So as you're going up, you're taking it with you. This one I will. This one was, you will. You know, if it was uh, three or you know two or three hundred feet, of, right? Uh, seven eighths or inch and a quarter. The or big stuff, like yeah. That, yeah, I would string. You know, I would string it, and then 
and just pull it up. And I think that's what there. we did for the DMR installation because he's using that larger hard line for that. That yeah. that we actually he pulled it up with a rope. Yeah. Yeah. But you're actually going. This is the half inch stuff. Uh huh. Okay. It's not as not as heavy. So. Right. So I can handle that. Okay. Well, be careful up there, and uh, we'll get you uh, some footage of you up there doing your thing, and we'll be back in the next segment. All right, and I'll see you on the ground. Absolutely. <laughs> Alrighty, so we move inside the shack and we're going to make sure the old cable is disconnected from the duplexers and uh, run out of the shack. So this cable, as we uh, came to find out, uh, was probably just fine, but uh, we're going to go ahead and again lead it out and then we'll reuse that cable hopefully at some point in the future if it tests okay. At this point, we don't know if it's bad or not. So we are going to go ahead and move it out because that top apex hole is where the hard line is going to come through. Now we can see that uh, KI4RWO is attaching the hard line, this half inch hard line to his belt. Uh, he also has the antenna. Now KD6FTR is holding it to make sure that it doesn't bang into anything so that once Ken gets high enough on the tower, you can see it'll just hang down. Now this is a lot of work for Ken, but again, he does this all the time. So he's gotten quite good at making sure he's got all his tools and so forth. If this was much heavier hard line, we would use a rope and a pulley. Hey, hold on, Ken. Dropping twist, Ken. You're dropping the radials. At this point, Ken has made his way up about halfway. Now, there's another antenna on this tower that you may have seen a video on, and that's where we installed the DMR equipment yeah. uh, at, at our location. And N1DTA uh, helped uh, uh, install the antenna for that. It's a very, very nice uh, antenna. But the storm that we mentioned a little while ago moved the arm that it's on yeah. and swung it over and it hit to the guy line. So the DMR has not been working very well either. So Ken is going to move that arm, loosen it up a little bit, and move that arm back away from the tower and get that antenna more properly positioned on the tower so that it can do its job more effectively. In fact, when we hold our nets, DMR is also another uh, option for users in the state of Kentucky to participate on our nets, both directly and through the internet. So Ken has moved the antenna away from the tower and the guy line it was resting up against. He will come back down the tower and uh, properly position it even better, tighten it down, and hopefully we won't have to revisit that for a while. Now at this point, he's at the top of the tower. The view up here is amazing, and if you've never climbed a tower, it is so beautiful. Uh, the state of Kentucky with all the green is just amazing to look out up uh, over the trees. At this point, what Ken is doing is he's uh, adjusting what he's brought with him, but he's also got to disconnect everything at the top of the tower, and he's got to lower the mast that the Comet GP1 is connected to. And you can see he's going to safely attach himself to the tower so that he can work with both hands, but he's already lowered that mast down so that he can access the antenna on the very top. So not only do we have the tower, but we have a 10 I believe it's about a 10 foot mast that goes up through the center. Now this is the Comet GP3 that he took up with him. It has a pigtail on it of about 12 feet because we don't want to run the hard line up that mast. So the hard line will stop pretty close to the top. There's 10 or 12 feet of uh, coax here that is connected to the antenna and Ken doesn't have to do any of the connecting. He doesn't have to tape it up or anything on the inside of the uh, shield there. All of that's been done. AC4DM ensured that he wouldn't have to do any of that when he was up at the top. So all Ken has to do is then basically loosen the brackets and then affix it to the tower like you see here. So you can see this antenna is uh, a bit longer. It's going to have a little bit better receive and get out a little bit better and we'll talk more about the uh, the results of all of this in uh, the next video. This antenna is even bigger. I bet we get into it now, Chris. <laughs> so again, he is at this point tightening down the antenna and getting it ready for uh, <laughs> attaching the pigtail from the antenna to the hard line that he took up. Alrighty, so we got Ken tightening up the GP3 up on the mast, and eventually he's going to raise that mast back up where it normally will be. And I think he even uh, was able to raise it a couple of more inches. So, you know, you get two more inches off a mast like that, you're going to get even better distance.
it's always really interesting to watch somebody who uh, who does this. I mean, they get up there, they don't even think about being so high off the ground. And again, he's got all of his tools where he needs it, and uh, he just needs to. He knows where he places things. He does things the same way every time, practically. Oh, there's a wonderful shot of a, an airplane going over our antenna uh, as he is uh, getting ready to move that mass back up into its upright position. So here you can see the mast is on its way up, or I think he's got it up. Uh, uh, no, he's actually moving it up, and he's also affixing the cable, the, the pigtail, to the mast as he uh, is going up as well to make sure he doesn't have to do that later. So the mast is going to give us even a little bit more height on top of the tower. Keep in mind that Ken is also uh, using tape to affix the cable to the mast so that it doesn't flap around in the breeze. Now he's on his way down, but as he works his way down, the new cable, the hard line that we're using for this, now also needs to be attached to the outside leg of the tower. So this takes a while. Uh, he'll put in a loop to make sure that we have a rain loop there, and I think this is actually the old cable. He's going to make sure that this is tied up and also not going to get in the way. Now back inside the shack, uh, we had a length of cable that Don has already attached to this end of the hard line, and we want to run some tests. Uh, you do all of this work, you'd hate to see that <laughs> something about the cable during installation or the antenna was in, in way not going to operate as efficiently as you hope. So we need to hook it up to the analyzer and make sure that it's going to show good. Ultimately, we'll have to then try to use our radios and see if we can get out. Did it fix our problem? So here's our handy Danny MFJ. I believe this is the 259 version. And Don is uh, about to check our VHF. 1.1 to 1. 1.1 to 1, as you heard. Uh, that's pretty darn good. And that's uh, 146.1. Uh, our actual output frequency is uh, 146.880, uh, and our input frequency is 280. So as he goes up, the uh, frequency just a little bit you can see at the transmit side it'll be about 1.2 now that's what the cable we have on it right now it's actually longer than we needed so Don brought his trusty uh, field kit uh, so that he can uh, build a cable right there on site he's got all of the pieces the connectors the soldering iron everything uh, so that he can build a shorter cable that's all we're going to need inside the shack and then we'll have to check the SWR once again. But that first check showed us that from an antenna standpoint, the reflected energy coming back was in a really good place at 1.1, 1.2. There's the Weller soldering iron that uh, AC4DM swears by, and we're going to finish up making this cable. Now remember, we're having a problem with the receive, not the transmit, so... Something about 146.280 at our uh, input frequency, that's where we're, we're experiencing the biggest problem. So uh, the, as far as the cabling and so forth, the antenna and so forth, uh, the SWR looks really good, but we're going to actually have to use our radios ultimately to, uh, to see if it's any better on the receive. Now we're going to attach this slightly shorter cable to the hard line and then attach this uh, to the T connector on the duplexers. The duplexers, you got four cavities there, but they work in pairs, an input frequency and an output frequency. And it's they give you separation and uh, rejection between the 8.8 <laughs> frequency and the 2.8 frequency, so you can use one antenna. All righty, so now we have the uh, newly created cable, a little bit shorter and better for our purposes here inside the shack. Don has it connected to the MFJ. We just need to add a little bit of power. And let's check the SWR one more time before we hook it up to the duplexers. And uh, in this particular instance, he's at 146.27. This is the input frequency or close to it. 1.0. Uh, you just can't get any better than that. So we're in a really good place there. As far as from our installation standpoint, now the testing needs to occur. Now, folks, I'll let you in on a secret. Once we get everything connected, 
the receive uh, was still getting smashed. It was something was attenuating the signal. We we still don't know what it is at this point. We've got a new antenna. We've got a hard line up there, and we are still not any better than before we started. But keep in mind, as you're troubleshooting your your equipment, you may end up replacing or substituting uh, devices, and ultimately find that uh, that is not the corrective action you needed and that you need to do further troubleshooting and that's what's coming up next in part three is we'll finally get this figured out but here in part two uh, again some more tower climbing hard line install antenna install a new cable created here that's shorter and we had wonderful swr going into the duplexers so at this point we've eliminated some additional items that we thought could have been the culprit but alas no for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. We hope you enjoy these videos watching work being done, maintenance activities being done at the repeater sites. If you're not involved with your club's maintenance, maybe you should volunteer. Take care, everybody, and watch out for part three as we finally figure out what's wrong with this installation. Take care. We put it on Steve's analyzer and it showed what